Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. We are so excited that you're here. We hope that our messages are going to bring you a whole lot of hope and healing. So join us as we get to learn more about how to live by faith and not by fear. We'd like to invite you, subscribe to our channel and in that way you will not miss any of our messages from wherever you are. God bless you. Some years ago, I went down to a place, to a shopping center, not a place, shopping center called the Pioneer Mall. I think, is it still called the Pioneer Mall? Downtown, you know, it's uh, the city center. I went down there to buy a shirt for myself. I wanted to change a shirt and put on something nicer. And those days, the Pioneer Mall had nicer shirts. I don't know whether they still do. They were a bit pricey um, compared to what was, sold, what was sold at Owino Market. I used to go down to Owino Market, but this time I said, I'm, I'm tired of going, going down to Owino Market to buy clothes, you know, secondhand, used clothes. I need a brand new shirt. And uh, yeah, so I walked into a shop that was selling nice shirts and I saw one that caught my eye. You know what I'm talking about? And I said, I want that one. So they told me the price and I said, yes, I can afford it. Um, and um, the label on it was, was, uh, was Giorgio Armani. And I had heard about, you know, Giorgio, Giorgio Armani shirts. I had heard that they are designer shirts. They're not ordinary. So I, I did not think twice about buying it. So I bought it. I put on it. The following day, I came here. I came to work, and everybody was saying, "Wow, what a nice shirt!" What a, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm not making it up. But then, later, when I, I got married, and one day I wore that shirt, and I was excited. Whoa, it's a designer shirt. It's, it's, it is Jojo Armani. In fact, I remember telling my wife, "This is Jojo Armani," and that's how I pronounced it. My wife says, "Ah." It's not genuine. It's not the real Jojo Amani shirt. It is fake. I opposed my wife. If, yeah, I got into a fight with her, not physically, but verbally. I said, no, 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 no. This is Amani shirt. It cost me this much. No, how can you tell me it is? It is fake. And people have admired my shirt. That means it is the real Amani shirt. So she kept quiet. Till when we traveled to Singapore, God opened the door for us to travel to Singapore. And she took me to the Amani. <laughs> she showed me, these are the real Amani shirts. So what you wore, what you bought and you've been wearing is fake. I kept quiet because at that point, <laughs> she was right. How many of you have gone to shirts, to, not, not to shirts, but to shops, or have bought something thinking it's genuine, it's a designer something, only to find out it is fake, it's imitation. Okay, let me show you on the screen, you know, some things that are genuine and others that are fake. All right, can you see that? Okay, which of the two is fake? Which one? The one on the right, Adibas. You see? The, the one on my, which one? Yeah, the one on my, on my, which one is fake? The one on my left, not, on, not, not the one on my right. So you see how confusing imitated things are. Imitations can be confusing. They are meant to confuse you. I'm also getting confused right now. But that is Adibas on my left. But the genuine, ma a genuine, the, the genuine one is this one on the right. Not so. It is Adidas. And you know, people who make fake things know how to package fake things. So they appeal to our eyes. They are attractive. Sometimes they are more attractive than the genuine ones. You need to pay attention to the labels. All right. And what's the next thing? Next thing. Next one. Yes, that one there. Ah, 
Which one is fake? Which one is genuine? The one on my left, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Pascal, how? Gnochi, Gnochi, whatever it is, Gnochi. But this is Gucci. The real deal, that one. If you, if you're not careful, you will end up paying the same amount of money for Gnochi as, yes. Remember what I told you, pay attention to what? To the label and pay attention to the details of the product so you are not duped into buying something fake that will not last long, that will start fading the very day you, you use it. Hey, this weekend, we're starting teachings on designer sex. Now, some of you are afraid of that word. Please don't switch off. There's some of you who are saying, how can we talk about designer sex? In the church, where God is, in the presence of God, in the presence of the Holy God, you're importing something from the world into the church. Hey, may I tell you something? All of us are here today because of that one thing and that one word called sex. Yes, we are all here. Okay. Now, when we say designer sex, what do we mean? What we mean is this. Sex as God has designed it. Sex as designed by who? By God. Now, before I get into the details of what I want to share with you today, because I, I realize that you know, some children are, are here with us. May I encourage the parents to take their children to children's church? This is a conversation for adults, all right? Please take your children to children's church. But teens, teenagers, you're welcome. You sit in here because sometimes teens know more than, more than we adults know, all right? Okay, so children are leaving. They are going. I'm not forcing you, but I'm encouraging you. All right, so are you still with me? When we say designer sex, what we mean is this, sex as God has designed it. You know why? Because sex is a gift from God. Some of you don't believe it, but it is a gift from God. God told Adam and Eve, in fact, it was not, he didn't give them instruction. He blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. How are they going to multiply? It was not going to be by just you know, watching each other and laughing, laughing with each other and eating together. It was through having sex. Sex is a gift from God. Sex is not a, it's not a bad thing as people, um, you know, uh, view it. Sex is not ugly. Sex is not, um, it's not um, a taboo. Sex Sex is not um, 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 uh, Satan's idea. Se uh, sex is God's idea. It's a gift from God. That's why it is holy. It is sacred. It is set apart. Provided. So listen to me. Provided sex happens in the context of marriage. That means... The, the people, the people who are licensed, who are empowered, the people who have the freedom <laughs> to engage in sex anytime, anywhere, provided it's not on the streets. So those who have that liberty, that license, that permission from God, that blessing from God, are those who are married. It must happen within the context of marriage. Now, some of you are saying, but, you know, um, pe other people are having sex even though they are not married. You are not other people. You are not other people. Are you hearing me? You are different. And, uh, when we talk about marriage, I have to be specific here. I have to be clear here. 
it is marriage between a man and whom, because God made them male and God did not make Adam and, and Steve and brought Steve to Adam saying, here is your bone of, uh, bone of your bones and flesh of your, bo of, of your flesh. God made Adam and who? And Eve. God did not make, make Eve and Eva. No, God made Eve and Adam. So it must, must be, it must be, so when we talk about marriage, it is marriage between a husband who is male and a wife who is female. Is that clear? What else do I want to say about, 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 about it? Before I get into other things. Hey, cohabiting is not marriage. Living together, moving in with someone, because however much you love them, it is not marriage as far as God is concerned. Now, I'm not bashing people who are cohabiting, but I'm just telling you that's not how God has designed it. Because when a man and woman start living together, you, you, automatically they will engage in sex. Not so. There's no such a thing as we're just living together, we're just sharing um, a room, a house. <laughs> okay. So, sex as God has designed it, is what we need to embrace, right? It's not, it's what we need to believe. It's what we need, hey, um, to think about. And also teach other people as God has designed it. Teach your children as a parent. Talk to your children about sex the way God has designed it. Designer sex. You see, this is a, a gas, a gas cylinder. It's a, I think called K gas. K gas. This gas, gas cylinder is made for a purpose. And what is the purpose? It's for cooking. It's not, it's not meant to be used for any other purpose. It's not for lighting the house. <laughs> that will be misuse and abuse, all right? Okay, it's not also to ban people. You know, you bring your child here because they're mis misbehaved. You bring them to the gas cylinder, light it, and... You force, you place their hands over the fire. No, that would, that, that's abuse and misuse. This is meant for cooking. And when we use it for cooking, it's a blessing. So you light it, Pascal. Wow. I know some of you in the balcony are not able to see it, but just imagine you're seeing it. <laughs> By the way, this is controlled fire. This fire is not dangerous. Why is it not dangerous? Because um, it's, not <laughs> it's not dangerous because it's, it's, it's lit up in a controlled environment. Right. And I started by lighting the matchstick, then putting it on the gas after. That's right. So if you had opened the, the cylinder and then lit the fire, what would have happened? We'd all get burnt here. <laughs> Yes, the fire would have gone wild, isn't it? Would have had, we would have had wild fire. That's, that's not the fire we want. This is what happens with sex. When we engage in sex the way God has designed it, it will be beautiful. It will not be dangerous. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt other people. And it will bring glory to God. You see right now, the manufacturer of this gas cylinder, if he was here, he would, be, he would be very happy. He would be very happy because what he made is being put into its right use. That's why we don't engage. We should not engage in sex before marriage. We should not engage in sex outside of marriage. We should not engage in sex outside of what God has designed it to be and what God has designed it for. Is that clear? No, no, you're not saying amen because... So re let me read some scriptures to you. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 25. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, 
This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called what? Woman. Actually, Adam said she shall be called wow man because Eve wowed Adam. She was a wow factor. That's why Adam said she's bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. All right? For she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become what? One flesh. Uh Aha, that now points to sex. One flesh. Married people, you know what I'm talking about. Those who are not not yet married, please, um, um, you you, 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 um, block your ears for a moment. Okay? They become one. One, one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. The devil has lied to people that sex is shameful. Sex is sinful. Sex is ugly. Sex is horrible. If it is done outside of the context of marriage, if it is not engaged in according to the designer's design, then it is ugly. Then it is, it is shameful. Then, you know, you, you're right. You're right to be guilty. But if you're married and you're doing it and you ought to do it as married people, all right? You ought to be, okay? It's a part of the, the, the package. <laughs> sex is a part, of the, a part of the package for those who are married. Hey, you need to realize sex is not ugly. Sex is beautiful. In fact, the moment a husband and wife Engage in it. Hey, God doesn't turn his face away. Say, so, oh, what are they doing? Oh, 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 it's horrible. It is shameful. I'm embarrassed. God is never embarrassed when couples are having it. In fact, it brings glory to God. It honors God. That is, it's an act of worship. That's, when, that's why when you're engaging, en- engaging in it, hey, look at it as an act of worship. Why? Because anything that brings God glory is worship. Married people, give Jesus a hand of praise. Now, there are people who say... Um, my body is my body. I can do it the way I want to do uh, with whatever I want to do with it. I can sleep with the wave I want. I can sleep with any woman I want. I can sleep with any man I want. I can sleep with with any animal I want. I can sleep with my cousin. I can sleep with my 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 brother. I can sleep with no that that, that that's wickedness. That's not how God has designed sex. You know what I'm talking about? That's not the design of sex. Anybody who jumps on a dog. Okay, let me not go there now. <laughs> Anybody who sleeps with a cousin, with a relative, a, a parent who sleeps, who molests a daughter, is not doing it according to God's design. You know what I'm talking about? Recently, I, 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 uh, I read a story of... Uh, siblings, a brother and sister in the U.S. who have won a court case to get married. They are blood relatives. They are biologically brothers and sisters. And they celebrated it. Oh, man. Please, let's, let's not buy into that. Because that's incest. You know what I'm talking about? It is incest. And it's not according to the way God has designed sex. So, there are some married people, married men, who say, I'm tired of eating the same, 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 same menu. I'm tired of the same menu. It's boring. It's boring. Listen to me. Uh, your wife is not the menu. Okay? Uh, <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about? No, 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 no. Your wife is a gift to you, a precious, more precious than food. Now, because they think, you know, wife is a menu, they're tired of it. And even women, the women who think I'm tired of the same menu, you know, day in, day out. Ah, I, I want to, it, it's, 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 I need to change the diet. I need to, then they sl- start sleeping with other people. That's not how God has designed sex. That's not what we, that's not what we call designer sex. That is fake. 
the fake products. And by the way, when we don't do it the way it has been designed, it will destroy us. It will hurt us like wildfire. All right? So God has given us sex. It's the gift from the living God, from the holy God. And Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, Honor marriage and guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband. Go draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex. What is casual and illicit sex? So single people who are in a relationship, because you love each other, you say, ah, let's try it out. You know, you let your, own, your hormones control you. That is illicit sex. It is illegal. God doesn't endorse it. As a married man, if you sleep with um, another woman, then it's illicit, it's illicit sex. It's illegal. As a married woman, if you sleep with another man, it is illicit. It's illegal. Honor the marriage bed. Respect it. Don't bring in another person into, the, into your marriage. That's very, very important. So listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. One of the, uh, the decisions I've made is, so we have, we have a, a domestic worker, okay? We call, we, call her, we call her our domestic assistant, you know, fancy, fancy title. But I have made a decision. I will not be in our bedroom with that maid, never. Whether my wife is there or not, I will not. When she's cleaning and I need something in that room, I will tell her, could you please leave the room? I want to do something there. I'm not going to walk in there when the maid is cleaning. No, I don't, because I want to honor our bedroom and also our marriage bed. It's very important. By the way, you can sleep with anybody. If, if you don't have self-control, you can sleep with anybody. Even a person you don't love, I'm telling you. Even a person you're not attracted to. All right? So that's why Paul tells us, in fact, he told Timothy, flee sexual immorality. Because illicit sex is fornication, sex between people who are not married, who are not married, or adultery. All right? You are married if you uh, do it with another person. Or homosexuality. It's sexual perversion. Now, all of you are so quiet. I don't know what you're saying. Mark chapter 10 says, At the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, and he wanted them to have sex so that we would have humanity, we would have more human beings on earth. Now, I want to just share a few things that you need to take home. We're talking about designer sex. Sex as God has designed it. So, what is the purpose of sex? What is it designed for? Why has God given us sex? Is it just for the sake of doing it? No. God has given us sex for a reason, for a purpose. So, so get ready everybody to hear why sex? The way God has designed it. Number one. Sex as God has designed it is meant to glue, to bond those who are married. It's meant to glue and bond a husband and wife. So let me read the scripture to confirm what I'm saying. Mark chapter 10 verse 8. And the two will become what? One flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. No comment on that anymore. You understand what I'm talking about. It's meant for bonding. It acts as a glue to connect a husband with the wife. To grow their intimacy. Listen to me. It's been proven medically that when people are having sex, there is a hormone, a love hormone, a bonding hormone that is released. That is called oxytocin. 
and it is a bonding agent. That's why when you as a husband have had, have had that thing, you know, you've had it, you've had, you know, you know what I'm talking about? You've had it with your wife. It's holy. It's nice. It's beautiful. And you're going to work. You, you, tell, you tell your wife, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving now. Your wife says, oh, can you stay, you know, stay for another five minutes? Isn't it, isn't it true, my brother? <laughs> yes. It's the reason why when your husband is at work, they call you and he calls you and says, honey, I miss you heaps. It's because oxytocin was released this morning. Or oh, at night. All right, whatever time you did it, you know what I'm talking about. The bonding agent. Now, when you engage in sex outside of marriage, you will become attached to the person you have, you have had it with emotionally and also spiritually. It's the reason why, even though you don't get married, hey, you still miss that man. You still miss that woman. She is somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? Is she is, she's around you somewhere. Because you emotionally got attached to her or to him. And it's the reason sometimes when people meet, you know, they are, they are from a, bi a boyfriend, they are ex-boyfriend, ex ex-girlfriend. Oh, they miss a heartbeat. The heart skips because you've seen someone with whom you got connected. So girls who are here, please keep yourselves pure till you get married. And even if you found yourself, you know, you, you, you know, um, you, you messed up your life sexually. I tell you what, not all is lost. Our God is a God of restoration. And if you have asked God to forgive you, he has forgiven you. Don't let the devil keep reminding you of what you have done, of your past. Please don't. Because God does not look at you on the basis of your past. You have been cleansed. And if you haven't asked God to forgive you, you can ask God to forgive you right now. And you come out of it. By the way, God has the power to redeem you from the bondage of sexual immorality. But I want to challenge you girls. Don't be available to anybody, to any man. No. Boys, you don't jump on any woman you see around because you're dying. I, say, I am dying. My, emo my hormones are on fire. That fire can be controlled. That fire can be contained. That fire is not your master. You're the master of your fire, your hormonal fire. Are you hearing me, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen? So don't jump on anybody. The only person you need to be available to as a married, a married man is your wife. Anytime, you're welcome. As a married woman, you need to be available to your husband. You remember, it's a bonding agent. That's why if you, if you deny each other that gift, it creates problems in your marriage. All right? I'm moving on now. By the way, are you still with me? Is, is this making sense to you? So the, the second thing, the reason God has designed sex is that sex is given to us for pleasure. It is. It's for pleasure. Our God is a God who wants us to enjoy. God wants us to enjoy the gift he has given us. That's why we should not dread sex, especially, specifically, all right, when it is done in the context of marriage, it should never be dreaded. We shouldn't be afraid of it. If we are afraid of sex as, as, a, as a married man, a married woman, there's something that is wrong. Then we need to deal with it, isn't it? But it's meant for pleasure to be enjoyed. So Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15 to 20 says this, My son, to Solomon speaking, by the way. Okay, Solomon had issues with the women, but this time he was wise. Yes, yes, remember, Pastor, Pastor Huntington, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, you know it. Yes, my son, share your love with your wife alone. Drink from her well of pleasure and from no other woman. I've, I've added the word woman there. 
Why, why would you have sex with a stranger or with anyone other than her? Reserve this pleasure for you, all right, and her alone, meaning these, the two of you ought to enjoy it mutually. Not with another. Your sex life will be blessed as you take joy and pleasure in the wife of your youth. Men who are here, and the reverse is true. Women, let her breasts be your satisfaction. That's the Bible, by the way. This, these are not my words. And let her embrace intoxicate you. You become drunk. <laughs> with her love. <laughs> Let it intoxicate you at all times. Be continually delighted and ravished with her love. Be attracted to your wife. Now, you men who are here, hey, I want to challenge you. You do something to polish your woman, your wife, okay? Married men. Because sometimes what happens is, you know, you, you look at other women and say, Wow, where, where was I? How come I did not see her? And I saw this one. Treat your wife properly. Feed her well. Look after her. Come on, buy for her. I don't know what the women's whatever deodorants are called. You buy. Buy for your wife. It's the one that is powerful, you know? Mm. A powerful uh, deodorant, powerful spray. When you walk into the room, you smell who? You smell your wife and, you know what I'm talking about, now something begins to happen. <laughs> yes, you begin winking your eyes. Mm. My son, why would you be exhilarated by an adulteress, by embracing a woman who is not yours? So, sex is meant for pleasure in the marriage, in the context of marriage. Enjoy it. And to enjoy a meal, it must be cooked. You can't go home now after this service and say, hey, where is food? And eat raw food. Or food that is not cooked well. That's why there's something that must be done before. We don't just, you know, in the middle of the night, you don't say, hey, it's time now. Let's do it. <laughs> you emerge like a submarine. Suddenly emerge. Hey, it's time to do now. No, you've got to prepare. Come on, prepare. People who are married, you've got to prepare. Pre and you are not married. You prepare by getting married. That's the preparation I'm talking about. You need to get married to prepare for that day. Oh, and on your honeymoon, when you are prepared, it is enjoyable. It is pleasurable, it is nice, it is beautiful. Now, some of you, you know, I'm, I'm talking about this, but you're, you're too old now, you know, maybe you're no longer, you don't have a husband, you're an old woman. You teach your grandchildren these things I'm talking about. This is for you as well. All right, so lastly, I'm finishing. <laughs> By the way, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3 and verse 5. Paul says a husband has the responsibility of meeting the sexual needs of his wife and likewise a wife to her husband. Neither the husband nor the wife has exclusive rights to their own bodies, but those rights are to be surrendered to the other. So don't continue to refuse your spouse those rights, except perhaps by mutual agreement for a, spe a specified time so that you can both be devoted to prayer. And then you should resume your physical pleasure so that the adversary, the devil, cannot take advantage of you because of the desires of your body. So don't load shade. Don't no load shading in marriage. And you know, sometimes you know, husbands want to punish their wives because of some issues they're having with them. They say, for a week I'm not available. And their wife also saying, I know where to get you. I know where I'm going to defeat you. I know how. And you deny your husband. Please don't do that, except when you agree to marry. Lastly, worship team come back. La lastly, sex is for procreation. We become co-creators with God through sex. It's to produce children. And the Bible says this in Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. God wants husbands and wives to become one body and one spirit. 
Why? So that, so that they would have holy children and protect that spiritual unity. Don't cheat on your wife. She has been your wife from the time you were. Yeah. Hey, when godly people, God-fearing people get married, God is excited because he knows they're going to produce children who they will teach his ways and will grow up as godly men and women. God is excited about people who fear him, people who, who walk with him, who have a relationship with him, getting married and enjoying sex, and as a result, producing children. Thank you for watching our message today. We truly hope it was a blessing to you. See you next time. God bless you.